Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, the US stock indexes have hit new record highs after the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady. However, the main reason for all of this momentum in the general stock market is because the Fed is projected to reduce interest rates at least three times this year, which will act as a positive catalyst for the general stock market. This is why we see indexes such as the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones surging even higher today, so this is great news for investors. Meanwhile, we also saw Nordstrom shares surge following a report that this retailer could actually be taken private, and that's why their share price jumped up by around 9.38%, up to $18.60. 66 cents per share. So it's great to see how the general stock market is trending upwards, and we also have a lot of single stock news, which is positive as well. But we also have some very interesting bits and stories throughout this video, so you're going to want to stay tuned. But right now, I want to focus in on Unilever. Unilever is one of those gigantic companies which owns a plethora of brands underneath their umbrella. And for context, I personally hold this company in my portfolio because it acts as a very stable dividend stock. But the reason why they're in the news today is because Unilever will be spinning off of their ice cream division. Unilever is actually the owner of brands such as Ben & Jerry's, Klondike, Briars, Popsicle, and many others. But recently, business hasn't been so good, so that's why they are spinning off their ice cream division, and they are also cutting around 7,500 jobs in an effort to cut costs. In my opinion, this is good news for Unilever, because by cutting these costs, it's going to save the company around $870 million over the next three years, which is great news. But don't worry, you're still going to be able to experience and eat your favorite frozen treats, considering that this company has actually done business in this division for the last hundred years, and they also own five of the top ten best-selling global brands in regards to ice cream. Therefore, these brands are not going to be going anywhere because Unilever is just going to spin them off into their own division. So overall, I think this is actually positive news for Unilever stock. So if you are a Unilever shareholder, feel Feel free to sound off in the comments down below. Next up, let's move on and talk about Dell, which is a technology and computing company. Dell Technologies is known for their computers, and if you didn't know, this company issued a return to office mandate back in February. This may seem normal at first, however, let me tell you, it gets bad, because now they are no longer considering remote employees for promotion or a change in job roles, which is very bad. Originally, before the shutdowns, Dell had always had a hybrid work culture, but now they are really bringing down the hammer on their employees. In the past, the CEO has even called out other companies, criticizing them that they don't have a hybrid work culture. But as of right now, it seems that Dell is losing money in this regard, so they are trying to bring everyone back to work. And honestly, I don't think this is a very positive news update, which could cause Dell's share price to go lower. Overall, I personally do not hold this company any longer in my portfolio, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about a company which I do hold in my personal personal portfolio, and that would be none other than Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO. This company recently received a very good PR in regards to their public relations, because as of this week, all of their 20 ounce Coke bottles will be made from 100% recycled plastics. Therefore, this is a very positive news update for Coca-Cola, and I absolutely love this company, because they are extremely stable and they have a pretty good dividend. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about Coca-Cola on whether or not you hold them in your portfolio down below in the comments. But now let's start to chip away at the bad stock news, starting off with one of my favorite healthcare companies named United Health. If you didn't know, United Health said that they are making progress on restoring systems that were knocked out by a massive cybersecurity attack, which was launched last month against their Change Healthcare. Since this cyber attack, there has been billions of dollars worth of payments that have been stuck in backlogs, and patients have struggled to fill their prescriptions. As of right now, we don't even have a general timeline when all the systems will be restored from the cyber attack. And some providers are actually struggling to keep their doors open because if they can't get paid, how could they possibly pay their rent? Therefore, this has been a huge problem for both customers and patients as well as pharmacies and many other businesses. According to Change Healthcare, they believe a group named Black Cat is behind this cybersecurity attack. If you recall, according to this article, this is the same group that perpetrated a ransom 
ransomware attack last year against MGM Resorts, which cost the company around $100 million. In my personal opinion, we need more cybersecurity stocks and companies to help other companies such as United Health out. Therefore, be on the radar for cybersecurity stocks, and one of my favorite is actually Cloudflare as well as CloudStrike, so feel free to look into those companies as well. Next up, let's talk about Costco, ticker symbol C-O-S-T, ticker name COST. If you weren't aware already, Costco's famous $1.50 hot dog combo will now only be available to members. As of right now, I am very interested to see how investors will react to this, considering that no one should mess with Costco's $1.50 hot dog combo. But now let's move on to a very large tech story in regards to NVIDIA and AI news. If you didn't know, NVIDIA recently had a conference to where this semiconductor star shared details about their next generation chips that could cost up to $50,000 each. These new chips are more effective and efficient, and they can run on lower power, meaning that they are going to be extremely useful in regards to other companies who want to create their own artificial intelligence technologies. Therefore, this has acted as a positive catalyst for NVIDIA's share price. But now let's move on to Meta Platforms, which I also personally hold in my portfolio. Recently, Meta Platforms has slashed their subscription fee for ad-free Facebook and Instagram. This should benefit Meta Platforms as well as their users. And if you didn't know, I personally hold Costco, NVIDIA, and Meta Platforms in my personal portfolio. But now let's jump over to the best stocks to buy, as well as individual stock analysis. The first stock that we're going to talk about in regards to the best stocks to buy would be none other than Super Microcomputer, ticker symbol SMCI. And if you recall from our last video, I literally predicted that they will have a pullback in their share price, and that's exactly what has happened. After the AI server maker announced the pricing of its public stock offering to where they are going to sell shares at a discounted price considering their current closing price, this has caused the company to pull back by around 5%, but it gets even worse. This recent slide would mark the fifth consecutive session of a decreasing share price in this stock, to where now they have erased around 28% of their market value. But don't let this news fool you, because this company still has a lot of upside left in it, to where now they are trading at only $862 per share. Therefore, I suggest that you should look further into this company to determine whether or not it's going to be a good buying opportunity for your portfolio. Also, if the current share price of $862 per share seems a little high for you, don't forget to look into companies and brokerages which will offer you share slices or fractional shares. This will allow you to purchase Supermicro shares and any other shares on the stock market essentially for as little as $1. So always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Next up, let's talk about the upcoming Reddit IPO, which should IPO at around $34 per share. Reddit is a very popular social media company and their ticker symbol on the public stock market is going to be RDDT and they are anticipated to go public on March 21st. The company is anticipated to go public at around $34 per share, and trust me, this IPO is going to be extremely volatile, which is why I would encourage you to at minimum put this company on a watch list. However, if you are a very experienced trader, feel free to take advantage of this upcoming volatility. In my view, there are three main options. Either as soon as the company comes out on their IPO, it's going to surge and then drop dramatically in their share price, and that's going to be scenario number one. Scenario number two is where this company has their IPO and then initially drops off in their share price immediately with aggressive selling because there is no lockup period for this company's shares. Lastly, we could see the company have an IPO and then dip in their share price, but then once the Reddit community gets a cheap enough share point, they are going to buy this company hand over fist, thus causing the company to surge in their share price. However, if you've noticed, all three of these strategies have one thing in common, and that would be a major pullback which is involved with each of these scenarios. Therefore, please be careful on this company, because IPOs are risky enough, and Reddit is just going to add a lot of volatility to an already interesting market, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Next up, let's talk about a major technology company named Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, which is most notably known for their personal computers and the iPhone. If you didn't know, I personally hold Apple in my portfolio, and they are being sued by the Justice Department. Apple is one of the world's most valuable technology companies, however, they consistently violate antitrust laws. And this is exactly why they are in trouble, because the Department of Justice believes that Apple is infringing upon antitrust laws by blocking rivals from accessing hardware and software features of its iPhone. Meanwhile, we also see the Federal Trade Commission is pursuing legal action against meta-platforms as well as Amazon. Therefore, these types 
types of lawsuits are nothing new, and the general stock market is very familiar with these types of lawsuits, particularly in the technology space. But even with that being said, Apple shares still fell on this bad news by around 1.4% to where now they are trading at around $176.10 per share. This has actually pushed their shares further down, considering that their shares are already down around 7.2% this year alone. In my personal opinion, this is just very short-term news because the long-term outlook for Apple is phenomenal and astounding, and that's why I still personally hold them in my portfolio, and to me, they are still one of the best stocks to buy right now. Next up, let's talk about another fantastic company to buy, which I personally hold in my portfolio, and that is none other than Micron Technology, which is a memory chip maker. The reason why Micron Technology, ticker symbol MU, is in the news today is because they recently crushed Wall Street targets for their earnings report. To put this into perspective, analysts thought the company would bring in sales of around $5.35 billion, but the company actually beat this estimate by bringing in $5.82 billion, which is great news. Likewise, analysts thought the company would bring in a loss of $0.25 cents per share in regards to their EPS, but the company actually brought in an adjusted $0.42 cents per share for their EPS, which is phenomenal, and that's why their share price is currently increasing right now. The company's shares literally surged by more than 13%, up to $108.90 per share, and in my opinion, there is still a lot of further upside left in this company. In a recent news release, the chief executive said that Micron delivered fiscal quarter two results with revenue, gross margin, and EPS, which is earnings per share, well above the high end of our guidance range. He goes on to say that this was a testament to our team's excellent execution on pricing, products, and operations. He even added, our preeminent product portfolio positions us well to deliver a strong fiscal second half of 2024. We believe Micron is one of the best beneficiaries in the semiconductor industry of the multi-year opportunity enabled by AI, end quote, and I completely agree with him. This is why over the past year, the company has literally jumped by around 65% in their share price, and I have been a very large holder of this company in my portfolio, along with companies like Super Microcomputer, so I am up massively on these investments. You should also be aware that Micron stock surged in their share price after the company beat on these results. So the future looks very bright for this company and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about a dividend company named Rhythm Capital, which recently declared a dividend of 25 cents per share for their dividend. Rhythm Capital, ticker symbol RITM, recently declared a 25 cent dividend per share on a quarterly basis to where now they have a forward yield of 8.96%, which is great news. This this dividend is going to be payable on April 26th for shareholders of record on April 1st with an ex-dividend date of March 29th. For me, I love to see this because this is one of the few dividend stocks I personally hold in my portfolio even though I am a growth stock investor. I personally like to have some dividend stocks around because while the stock market is crashing, I use these dividends to reinvest back into the dividend company so my next dividend is even greater. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this strategy down below in the comments. Next up, you need to be aware of General Motors and Ford, which we touched on in our last video. Both General Motors and Ford did not receive good news yesterday, but today they did receive good news. They scored a huge win because the United States softened their fuel economy rules. Recently, the Department of Energy significantly eased proposed rules that would have forced automakers to reduce production of gas-guzzling vehicles or they will face billions of dollars worth of fines. For context, if these rules went through, General Motors would have faced a $6.5 billion fine, while Stellantis would have faced a $3 billion fine, and Ford would have faced a $1 billion fine if they did not adhere to these rules. And since these rules were either refined or scrapped in some instances, this is very good news for companies like General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis. That's why we are seeing an uptick in General Motors stock as well as Ford stock. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about if you hold any of these companies in your portfolio. Lastly, let's round out the video talking about major companies that are going to be releasing earnings on Thursday. These companies would include Nike, ticker symbol NKE, FedEx Corporation, ticker symbol FDX, Lululemon Athletica, ticker symbol LULU, and many other companies. In my personal opinion, I'm going to be watching Nike and Lululemon, considering that these companies have the potential to pop after these earnings results. But overall, I'd love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these stories down below in the comments. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.